So, you know, I'm, I'm, you're, it, it's true to say, as you do, that, um, that these things aren't so problematic in terms of the concrete outcomes. But there are situations where it does become more problematic. I mean, locally for us, I think it's problematic that, for example, we spent so long and so much sort of media energy has been expended on looking at very obsessive micro tinkering of diet as if that was the most important thing you could do for your health. And we've done that at the complete exclusion, really, of, of talking about the other sort of much more significant lifestyle risk factors for real health. I mean, you know, social class is, is the single biggest predictor of health outcome inequalities. And you never really get people talking about that in mainstream media. There's this, to my mind, actually slightly sort of childishly reductionist, you are what you eat, sort of right wing individualist manifesto. And you get it from your friends. People say, oh, you know, you can say what you like, but I have to walk past this council estate every morning on the way to the tube. And, you know, I see parents feeding their three year old children crisps for breakfast. You can't tell me it's not diet, you know, it's got to be diet, that's why they're doing so badly at schools, that's why they're violent. And you go, well look, you know, I think you'll find it's a bit more complicated than that. So there are the opportunity costs of bullshit, you know. The real causes of health outcome inequality or bad school performance are not to be found in molecules, they're not to be found in the fish oil pills which have been promoted so endlessly in mainstream media. But, if you take the exact same kinds of, of nonsense that you see from our Western pill peddlers like you know, pa Patrick Holford, the vitamin pill salesman who I talk about a lot in the book. When you take uh, those sort of slights of hand with evidence and then you put that into a context where it really matters. So you're not talking to people about, you know, this is a cure for you feeling tired all the time or having headaches. When you take it as Matthias Rath, the South African vitamin pill salesman did to South Africa, where well, he's not actually South African, he's, he's European. But when you take those ideas to South Africa as he did, then you're into a very different ballgame. I mean, he started taking out full page adverts in the South African media saying the end to the AIDS epidemic is here and it's vitamin pills and saying in exactly the same way that Patrick Holford does, our British vitamin pill salesman, uh, it, there's a conspiracy by the pharmaceutical industry and anybody who criticizes my vitamin pills is a, is a part of this conspiracy from the pharmaceutical industry uh, and the pharmaceutical industry are trying to poison you with these terrible products. Matthias Rath says in his adverts, uh, you know, why should Africans continue to be killed by, by these antiretroviral drugs? People, on, anti, people on, on taking vitamin pills live twice as long, it's much better than antiretrovirals. Uh, and of course he did this in a country that was um, probably the worst place you could possibly take that message to. I mean, South Africa firstly is a country that's been ravaged by AIDS. I mean, AIDS is actually a very difficult thing to get your head around because it's almost like the opposite of anecdote. 25 million people died, uh, have died so far of AIDS, 3 million people died last year, 300,000 people die every year of AIDS in South Africa, and that's one every two minutes. And I, I don't believe that you've um, been able to mount any kind of emotional response to that sat opposite me on this table because you know, those numbers are so ridiculously, preposterously huge that you just, you don't, you don't get any sort of heaviness in your chest when you hear that. And yet, you know, 1.2 million AIDS orphans in South Africa, 30% of all women presenting at, at uh, antenatal clinics are HIV positive. I mean, it's, a, it's an extraordinary situation. And of course, um, you know, Thabo Mbeki, president of uh, South Africa until very, very, very recently, was an AIDS denialist and fascinatingly he was introduced to uh, many of the basic ideas of AIDS denialism by Matthias Rath's colleague and employee Anthony Brunk who is a barrister in South Africa who boasts in his letter of recommendation to Matthias Rath uh, that it was he who introduced Thabo Mbeki to these basic ideas. Now the South African government in the sort of first part of the 21st century variously believed or claimed that HIV was not the cause of AIDS, that antiretroviral drugs were not the most important treat were, were not an appropriate treatment for AIDS. They refused to roll out antiretroviral drug treatments, they refused donations of money to pay for antiretroviral drug treatment, and they refused to accept donations of drugs to give to people who needed them both to treat people who were dying of AIDS and also to prevent maternal transmission. And it's been estimated 
that between 300 and 350,000 people died unnecessarily during this period just because of a set of stupid ideas.